Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Turaj Ibrahimi, who's professor at EPFL, and he's also chairman of JPEG. Turaj, welcome to the studio. Good to be here. Now, the engineering team behind the first edition of JPEG has been awarded an Emmy for their outstanding contribution to image coding. As part of that team, I wanted to congratulate you for that. Thank you very much. My first question is, the first edition of JPEG, or, or JPEG-1, or ITU-T81, uh, was released in 1992. It still dominates the marketplace. What was the secret to JPEG-1 success, in your opinion, and how has this success endured for so long? Yeah, this is a very good question, and you could imagine we have been asking these questions to ourselves, too. I don't really pretend to have the exact answer, but I can tell you some of the reasons we find are behind this longevity of uh, such, a, such a standard in an environment, by the way, which is not used to have such longevity for technologies that are involved. Most technologies, most devices that are used uh, nowadays, if you're lucky, they last five years and then you move to another technology. JPEG-1 has been going on for 27 years and everything indicates it has very good future in front of it many decades to come. Now, why? Well, maybe the first thing is its credibility. You know that JPEG is a standard that has been endorsed under auspices of three standardization bodies. Uh, one is ITU, one is ISO, and the last one is IEC. Now, each of these organizations alone, they have already magnificent, amazing credibility. And when they join forces and they endorse a single specification, you can just guess uh, there is, this is a very, very big credibility. But that's not a lot. Of course, you need to also have something good behind what is being endorsed. And uh, let me tell you a few of these uh, particularities of JPEG. Uh, one of the I would say maybe the boldest decision of the JPEG committee when they started to work in this standard was to put the user, the end user, at the center. Not necessarily the interest of companies or group of companies, but really paying attention of what users want. We know today this is something many do, but uh, I think at that time, uh, it was really 30 years ago, it was really a very bold decision. And uh, one maybe particular um, instantiation, example of such a decision was that the standard is not only openly accessible, but it is also royalty free, which in my opinion is uh, a very, very important factor behind the longevity and also success from the first place, from first day of the standard. And it had to be small enough, I suppose, in those days. To, uh, to be something that was manageable by the, the internet in those days. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, every image and uh, by extension also video, by nature in digital form represent a huge amount of data. And it doesn't matter really how much resources you have. Um, it is very expensive often to deal with images and with video. So you need, you are even today, even tomorrow, you will be always bound and obliged to compress signals. The more you compress, the more manageable they become. So the first reason JPEG standard exists is to really reduce the size of these files to something that is reasonable to manage, to store, and to transfer at, uh, at reasonable cost and at reasonable time. But we know, of course, that compression is not the only thing, but that the quality of the image itself has to has to be of a reasonable standard that people will still want to be using that that uh, that standard is is that is that uh, a good enough uh, description of it do you think yeah so i told you there were many reasons uh, for the success of jpeg one of them is uh, that the um parameter that defines uh, the file format is not actually the size it's the quality so as a user you say, I want to have at minimum this quality, and then the encoder of JPEG, it's going to make whatever it can to find the smallest size as long as the quality remains above the threshold that you have set. This is actually a good example because we could have done the other way around. If we were interested in the interest of companies and service providers, 
we would have said, hey, uh, I want this file to be 10 times smaller because I don't want to spend more money to buy disks to store it as service provider or I don't want to spend too much money to uh, transmit this uh, through networks because I have to buy the infrastructure for it. Um, we didn't do it. We actually said, well, you buy whatever it takes. We guarantee or we do at least our best to have these resources as small as possible, but the reference is the quality. So you're looking, you were looking very much towards the future, I'm sure. I wanted to ask you, uh, how has JPEG's work uh, evolved over the years and what are its top priorities today? Yeah. So uh, since day one, uh, JPEG has been really following more or less the same principles. Uh, we want uh, standards that are timely, that they are user centric. We want them preferably to be royalty free and open. And of course, we want them to respond to real needs. Uh, since JPEG 1, we have been working on a few other standards. One of them is JPEG 2000, that in fact initially was to replace JPEG, but uh, JPEG 1 was so good, some call it, it's a future technology f of alien origins. Um, that's why it's so good. Um, it didn't happen. So JPEG 2000, in fact, didn't unseat uh, JPEG. It created new markets. It created uh, digital cinema. It created uh, broadcasting. It created um, medical imaging, etc. Um, after JPEG 2000, we have been still working, and maybe a couple of them I'm going to uh, mention uh, without being too long. One of them is JPEG XS. Uh, JPEG XS is a new standard. XS doesn't stand for extra small, but extra speed. And this is especially interesting for applications where latency is very important, like self-driving cars. You have an AI model that has to s look at the pictures or video of, this, of the street and uh, make decisions. If the, the, the fastest the images from the capture arrive to the AI module, the faster the AI module is going to make a decision and can prevent probably accidents, even save lives. So this is one of our uh, top uh, projects. We just finished this first version of the standard, so it is actually an international standard. The second one I want to talk about is JPEG XL. Uh, and again here, XL is not l extra large, but extra uh, uh, long term. And this one is to replace the JPEG one. So JPEG one has been magnificent, more than quarter of a century. That's several generations in terms of digital life, uh, but there will be an end to it. And of course, JPEG committee has the duty to look at beyond JPEG, and this is where we are actually looking at in JPEG Excel. While you're demystifying uh, acronyms uh, and initials, perhaps you should tell us what JPEG actually stands for. I know a lot of people will just use uh, the, the name JPEG, but it's, of course it, it, it has a, 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 an actual meaning, doesn't it? Absolutely. So. Uh, JPEG, uh, sometimes people actually use it as synonym of uh, pictures or images, right? So they say, give me some JPEGs. Uh, but in fact, the name is the acronym of uh, the committee that created it. And the first format somehow is using the same name, JPEG. It stands for joint because it's between these three organizations, ISO, IEC, and ITU. Um, P stands for photographic. E stands for experts, and G for group. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Well, I'm sure that, that will save a, a lot of people looking it up on Wikipedia there. Yeah. So uh, finally, I just wanted to ask you, you'll be accepting uh, the award on behalf of uh, JPEG One's developers. What might you be saying in your acceptance speech? Oh, that's a very interesting question. I would probably say two things. One is that the original JPEG team that created this technology, not only created an amazing technology, but also set the ground for a lot of other technologies following the same blueprint. And in fact, a lot of JPEG technologies and a lot of other standardization um, uh, technologies that have become successful, they are in a way following 
the same processes, the same approaches as the original JPEG committee. And this should not be um, forgotten, that uh, JPEG is not only a great technology, but also it was the, a committee that really defined how standardization should take place in order to be successful. You've done extremely well. Well, Tuaran Jarihimi, thank you for joining us in the studio, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the future and perhaps uh, discuss uh, the, the, the future evolution of JPEG. It will be with pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.